hi and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another where are you episode this is the third video in my series i will link my previous videos in the description box below and if you're new to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video I hope that you enjoy this video and you may give my channel a chance by hitting that subscribe button and also turning on that bell so you're notified every single time that I post. Before getting into today's video, I just want to give my usual disclaimer. I mean absolutely no harm to anybody that I talk about in this case or anybody involved with the case. I'm simply just putting information together to raise awareness about cases on the internet. I also apologise if the lighting does change every now and then. I'm currently using the natural lighting and it keeps going from sunny to really damp and dreary and then to sunny again. So if the lighting does change, that is why. So let's jump right into today's case. So in my previous video, I talked about a father and son duo who went missing whilst on holiday and when researching cases I did not expect to find an open missing persons case with a similar setup and that is until I came across this case. This case is very intriguing but it is very upsetting as well. This case really did struggle to get into the media because at the time that this all broke things were a little crazy over in america and it really struggled to get the media attention that it deserved so that's why i'm covering today's case to hopefully give it the attention it needs and get people home to their families today we are going to be talking about nicole fitz and her two-year-old daughter ariana fitz nicole fitz was 32 years old she was very independent from a young age but as she got older she started to struggle financially and she really struggled to keep a roof over her and her daughter's heads. She was doing absolutely anything she could to make ends meet. She was working a lot of hours just to try and have enough income. No matter how many hours she worked, she really struggled to be financially stable. Whilst Nicole was working, Ariana spent a lot of time with babysitters. And the babysitters that Nicole used, she had met them through a local pastor. In 2016, Nicole managed to get more of a permanent home for her and her children. She decided to move in with one of her co-workers in Bayview, California. So Nicole was working at Best Buy and this co-worker also worked at the same Best Buy. Nicole was frequently working the early shift and she would work extremely long hours. She would work all day. And she also had to travel two hours to work and two hours home as well. With the help of her co-worker, Nicole managed to get an affordable babysitter. Ariana went to stay with these babysitters and the babysitters were called Celia Hearn and Helena Martin. So Ariana went to stay with Celia and Helena and they planned for Ariana to go home in February. Ariana and Nicole were obviously very excited to see each other again. They missed each other extremely when they was apart but unfortunately there was no other answer to the situation because Nicole needed to work the hours to make sure she had enough money for her children. But little did Nicole know that this would be the last time that she would see Ariana. During the time that Ariana was at her babysitter's, Nicole did frequently call Ariana and there would always be an issue. It would almost see that it wasn't the right timing. Ariana was always playing it with friends or she was out of town or she had gone to the store. There was always an excuse to stop Nicole from speaking to Ariana. So in March, Nicole was ready to pick up Ariana, but the babysitters told them no. They said that Nicole couldn't pick up Ariana because they had took her to Disneyland. And this made Nicole really angry. They had took her child six hours away on a trip without her knowledge, without her permission. 
So, understandably, it really infuriated Nicole. On the 1st of April 2016, Nicole had a very usual day. She went to work and then after work she met up with a friend and they decided they were going to go out to dinner. Now, whilst at this dinner, Nicole went to an ATM and drew out $600. Her friend didn't know why she drew out that money or why she would need that amount of cash on her, but she didn't question it. And later in the night, they went back to Nicole's home to have a girl in it, have a chill out and watch some films. Whilst at home, Nicole got a phone call and as soon as she hung up the phone, she said she needed to leave and go and take a bus to a local restaurant to meet Helena, one of the babysitters. She told her co-worker that she wouldn't belong. Her co-worker offered to go with her but Nicole said no I'm fine I can do this on my own and then she left. She assured her co-worker that she wouldn't belong. Despite Nicole saying she wouldn't belong, the next morning her co-worker noticed that Nicole was not home and she had not gone to work. The co-worker also had a worrying text message on her phone from Nicole that was sent the night before. The text message said Nicole, Ariana and a friend called Sam were going to Fresno in California. Now this really worried her co-worker as she had never heard Nicole talk about a friend called Sam. She had never heard of a Sam and when talking to family members they agreed that she did not have a friend called Sam. And the next day, something even more suspicious happened. A Facebook post was posted to Nicole's Facebook and this post said that she was spending time with her three-year-old and this was the break she needed. Now, the reason it concerned family members and friends was that one break was spelled incorrectly and this is not something Nicole would do. She's very intelligent and was always very correct with her grammar. Secondly, this post said that Ariana was three years old, when in fact she was two years old. And it's very suspicious because I don't think a mother ever forgets how old their child is. They would never mistake how old their child is. And personally, me being a mother myself, I would never mistake how old my son is. You just know that instantly. It's not something you forget. So I fully understand why her friends and family were so suspicious and so worried about this post. On the 5th of April, Nicole's friends and family decided to finally report Nicole and Ariana as missing. But unfortunately, on the 8th of April, a gardener was working in John McLaren Park when he came across a piece of plywood and there was a branch oddly placed over this plywood so he had moved it and there he discovered the body of Nicole Fitz. Also there was an odd symbol painted on the front of this plywood. I'm not too sure if I'll be able to get a picture but if I, if I can I will put it on screen now. The only thing we know in the circumstances of Nicole's death was that she was in the fetal position when she was found. We don't have access, as far as I know, to any autopsy results, so we don't know exactly how she died. But police haven't said it is, in fact, a homicide. I just want to pause here and say I apologise if you do hear any background noise. I can't avoid the background noise, so I really do apologise about that. Since Nicole's death, Ariana has not been seen, and... It has now been declared that she has been in fact missing since February and this was the last time that Nicole would have seen Ariana alive. Since Nicole's death and Ariana's disappearance, Ariana's babysitters have been unresponsive. They have denied to help police, they have denied to speak to media. Their statements have been so inconsistent. Also, Helena was jailed for nine years for killing the father of her children. But since this information came to light, the babysitters still have not been named as suspects in this case. In my opinion, that seems so sketch to me. If you had cared for a child, 
you would be distraught if they were missing you would want to help the investigation you would want to find that child you would want to find the two-year-old so i really don't understand why the babysitters are not being cooperative because in my personal opinion i would just want to find that child so there has been different theories over what has possibly happened to adriana and nicole and I will go over them theories in the end of this video. Ariana has been missing over three years now and she would be five years old. The Special Victims Unit and also the FBI are now working on this case to try and find Ariana. Also, Ariana has been put on the FBI Most Wanted Kidnapping Victims list. Police fully suspect foul play and they are reaching out for any information that may just put the pieces together and find out what happened to Nicole and Ariana. Nicole's employer Best Buy have also put a £10,000 reward out there for any information leading to finding Ariana. I, as always I will leave all details of the relevant people you need to contact if you know any information about this case. So I'm now going to go over the theories about this case and yes they are just theories. I am in no way shape or form saying that these have happened or these are true. One or two of them are more believable than others but they are exactly what I said, just theories. Nicole's family have said they believe that Ariana's disappearance is directly linked to Nicole's death and I personally think that as well. I think it's quite obvious given all the evidence about the situation and everything that we've discussed, it's quite clear that these are linked. Many people believe that the babysitters killed Nicole so they could keep Ariana as their own child. Now this isn't as far-fetched, it could be believable. A lot of people will do a lot of things for children or to have a child. Some people will even go to lengths of doing such heinous crimes to try and get away with it and have someone else's child as their own. Many people think that there is a chance that Ariana died long before Nicole. They believe that she may have been a victim of abuse and that the babysitters were possibly abusing her and then she died because of that abuse. And then when the babysitters couldn't keep up that secret, they met up with Nicole and killed her to avoid the truth coming out. Now, there is no evidence at all at the moment to back up that theory. As I said earlier on, it is just a theory. People believe that there is little meaning to the symbol on the plywood. People believe there is little meaning behind the symbol on the plywood and they don't believe it's linked to Nicole's murder. I fully understand that theory. We don't know if that was put on the plywood before by somebody else, by someone doing graffiti and then the old plywood was just used to cover the shallow grave. Also, police have not discussed any connection between the symbol and between Nicole's death. So now I'm just going to give a brief description of what Ariana looked like in 2006 when she disappeared. You may think it's quite silly for me to now give that description three years later, but people may have just seen her and it may just jog someone's memory and they may be able to give some information that would help this case. Ariana was two and a half years old when she went missing. She is a black female, she had brown eyes, she had black hair, she was around two foot tall and she weighed around 35 pounds. And also Ariana was last seen in the Bay Area of California. As I said earlier in this video, if anybody knows any information the relevant contact numbers are down below please get in touch with the relevant people that you need to contact the littlest bit of information could just break a case it may seem insignificant to you but it may be really significant to the case so if you do know anything please reach out to police and just let them know so that is all for today's case 
Ariana is still missing and it's so sad and I hope maybe with help of this video we can get her story out there and we can talk more about Ariana and get her the justice she needs. I really hope that Ariana is found safe. If not, I hope that the family eventually get closure and get the justice they deserve. They deserve to know where Ariana is, whether unfortunately she is dead or not, or whether she's safe or in a bad situation. I hope they can figure a way to get her home and get the justice that they deserve for Ariana and Nicole. Because as far as I'm aware, nobody has been charged with her murder and police are no clearer on who has done that. So that is all for today's case. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and I shall see you in my next video. Bye.